Okay, let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Rachel Ehrlich is expected to be joining us shortly, maybe having some technical issues. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to take a, a moment to uh, remember a lifelong Madison resident who died on July 31st, Louise Alperti. She was 78. She was born in Morristown, April 4th, 1943, to late Thomas and Madeline Alperti. She was raised in Madison with her sister and was a graduate of Madison High School. Before retiring, she had a career with Exxon Mobil in Florham Park as a file clerk for over 20 years. She is survived by her beloved sister, Ann Hogue, and her husband, Rolf. Of, of Madison, two nieces, her cherished great nieces and nephews. So let's take a moment to remember Louise Alperti and pass our thoughts on to her family and friends as she leaves behind. Thank you. And let the record reflect that uh, Councilwoman Rachel Ehrlich has joined us. Can I have a motion for the regular minutes of May 24th, 2021? So moved. Second. Any uh, council discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, a motion for the special joint meeting with the planning board of, of May 26th, 2021. So moved. Second. Any corrections? Or all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, executive minutes of July 26, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and the regular minutes of July 26, 2021. So moved. Second. Any corrections or changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 It. Again, I apologize for our delay. We just had a uh, heavy agenda and um, need to get through some key items. Um, welcome to the dog days of summer. And um, we are in a heat wave warning for starting Wednesday. So please take it easy in the heat. Watch your power usage in the afternoon and early evening and um, hang around a pool. And just a reminder that we are hoping that this is our uh, last fully virtual meeting and that this is our only August meeting. So we will not be meeting again until September 13th, which is when we uh, plan to launch our hybrid model. Um, and uh, this would include uh, the council chambers being open to the public with our staff and council president in person. And then there would be a live uh, feed via Facebook Live for those who want to view at home. Um, details on how to connect and the procedures for public comment will be shared in the coming weeks. But please keep in mind, as we learned 17 months ago, a lot can change in one month. It can move in a very positive direction or it can move in a very different direction as we're trending right now. So this is assuming that there are improvements in the current infection rates and, the, and guidelines will be in place that will permit us to meet in person. So please stay tuned. As again, this may change, but it is certainly our goal to get back into in person in September. And please, if you haven't gotten your vaccine, do it tomorrow. There was a great article in the New York Times talking about families that have regretted putting it off. One of these things, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is now. So please get your vaccine. And on Tuesday, August 3rd, we had National Night Out return to Madison after a multi-year hiatus. And it was a perfect uh, weather night as opposed to previous years when the first Tuesday in August seemed to be the hottest night of the summer. All the council members were able to join visits in neighborhoods. And um, it was great to visit around town, have a great procession of uh, police, fire, ambulance, and uh, others to, eat, to the various gatherings and then gather at Waverly Place at the... Uh, end of the evening, and I want to thank Acting Chief John Misha 
I think Captain Joe Longo for their leadership in bringing back National Night Out in Madison. And also thanks to Chief DeRosa for the fire department participation in our ambulance corps, along with others that made that night so special, special as it emphasized Madison's commitment to community policing. I'm sure you're going to hear more in uh, Councilwoman uh, Byrne's public safety report. And today at lunch, we uh, gathered to uh, congratulate public health nurse Marlene Bolin on her retirement for the Madison Health Department after 27 years. And as you probably heard me say multiple times uh, during the pandemic, I would often introduce Marlene as Madison's Dr. Fauci. But to put her in perspective, the other day I heard President Biden introduce Anthony Fauci as the CDC's Marlene Dolan. That's how great she is. So um, but seriously, her dedication and knowledge, not only during the 17 months, but also over 27 years with second to none, she put in endless hours, always with a smile, so Marlene, thank you for your service to the residents of Madison, and we wish you the best of luck in your retirement. And she has promised that she will be uh, attending council meetings in the future. And the employees in the month of August, um, and this may be no surprise after you heard the report, uh, utility report from uh, Rector Ehrlich last month, Ronald Meyer, Vincent Patty, and Thomas Sitch from the Electric Utility Department have been selected as our employees the month of August as nominated by Councilman Ehrlich who witnessed their above and beyond actions. Um, on a hot July day, an elderly the Madison resident was out for a walk with her aide when she became fatigued, unable to complete the uphill return to her house. While the woman was stranded in the middle of the road, two Madison Electric tr trucks drove by and observed the situation. On Vince and Tom stopped to help. Using a lawn chair from a nearby house and with the help from a resident's aide, the men got the woman into the chair and carefully carried her back to her home. Their quick and creative, thoughtful, thoughtful response prevented a bad situation from getting worse. So please congratulate them. And again, Rachel, thank you for that nomination. And now we move on to uh, reports from committees. Public Safety, Council President Byrne. Thank you, Mayor. So as the mayor announced on Tuesday, August 3rd, the police department hosted the National Night Out and it was a great success. We visited nine neighborhoods and hosted a block party in the center of town on Waverly Place. Madison officers, including our community relations unit, handed out t-shirts, wristbands, neon glow sticks, and other gifts for the kids. Um, thanks to Rothenberg Orthodontist, kids enjoyed ice cream and Italian ice throughout the evening. Department personnel met with residents and stakeholders to promote the police community partnership and neighborhood camaraderie. There has been a great deal of positive feedback and we cannot wait to build on this event for next year. They would like to thank the following who assisted us in the event. The Madison Fire Department, Madison Ambulance Corps, First Baptist Church of Madison, the Morris County Sheriff's Office, Project Pride, NASA, Jersey Battered Women's Shelter, New Jersey Department of Corrections, Madison Pharmacy, Madison Elks, Rothenberg Orthodontist, Crowley Cupcakes, New Vernon Fire Department, Morris County Communications, Atlanta Atlantic Ambulance Air, and DJ Rock and Roll Russo. Uh, so it was a wonderful event and uh, we're already starting to plan for next year. That's my report, Mayor. Thank you. And now uh, Finance and Borough Clerk, Ms. Bailey. Right, thanks, Mayor. Um, earlier this year, historic uh, legislation established in-person early voting in New Jersey. So this law makes our state even more voter friendly and strengthens our democracy by expanding opportunities to exercise your right to vote. So this new option allows registered voters to cast their ballot in person using a voting machine during a nine day period prior to the election day. Beginning October 23rd, 2021, a person can now choose to vote in person on a voting machine when it's most convenient for your schedule. Every county will provide registered voters, voters with this option for the 2021 general election. They will designate in-person early voting locations that will be open Saturday, October 23rd through Sunday, October 31st. Hours will be from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. No appointment is necessary. 
And for Madison, it will be the Madison Civic Center will be our living location. And applications for vote by mail ballots and voter registration forms are available in the borough clerk's office or online at morrisselections.org. And once again, the borough uh, of Madison has, um, has established the identification card program with appointments available on Tuesdays and Thursdays to any resident of the borough of Madison able to provide the requirements for establishing his or her identity and residency as set forth in this ordinance. And forms are available online in the borough clerk's office and you can call 735-93-3040 for more information. And then from the tax collector's office, uh, property tax bills were mailed about 10 days ago. The grace period for the August payment has been extended to August 24th. Residents are encouraged to submit their payment though as soon as possible. Payments that are not received on or before August 24th will be subject to interest and penalties. And as per state statute, these penalties will be calculated to go back to August 1st. So a payment that is received on August 25th will not be one day late, it will be 24 days late. Also note um, that the payment must be received on or before August 24th. Postmarks do not count. But the borough does offer an online payment option. Please visit Rosenet for more details and call the tax department at 973-593-3056 or email them at taxcollector at rosenet.org if you have questions. And from the finance department, August is a big month for debt payments at the borough. And this Friday, the borough will be making its semi-annual payment on the Madison Recreation Center debt. The amount for this payment is $271,515 and includes $230,000 of principal payments on the debt. And this debt payment covers both the land acquisition as well as the turf field complex. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And Public Works Engineering, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Engineering Department, uh, for the Plaza, Merrill, and Garaguso are forming the concrete base for the upper stairs and reinforcing steel is in place. Cefeli General Construction began work on June 1st and has now completed curb and driveway replacement, topsoil and seed for the entire project. The most severe of the miscellaneous sidewalk replacements has been completed. Paver resets downtown and several driveway aprons are also be approved in the central business district as part of this project. Driveway aprons for Osteria Trevi, restaurant, Chipotle, and Enterprise are scheduled for next week. The stair construction project at Summer Hill Park is progressing well. Timber work is complete. Railing and stone dust infill should be complete within a week or so. A grant application was submitted to the Morris County for construction of the first phase of trail and boardwalk construction at Morris Park. For the DPW, DPW was working with Donnelly Engineering in partnership with PSENG to conduct and operate energy audits of the Hartley Dodge Memorial, DPW, Public Safety Complex, Library and Water and Light Plant. Field crews from Donnelly were on site today. 75% of the cost of the energy improvements would be funded by a state grant with the remaining 25% funded by the borough over a five year period interest free through our monthly PSENG natural gas bills. <clears throat> Later in the month, the striping vendor hired to line Anthony Drive and Wayne Boulevard will also be refreshing all school sidewalk crosswalks and major intersections downtown with thermostatic paint, thermoplastic paint, excuse me, which is brighter and more durable than traditional paint. DPW is currently recruiting for two vacant full-time entry-level positions with a starting salary of $36,081 with health and pension benefits. Madison residents are encouraged to apply through the borough website beginning later this week. The DPW sewer division is working with the engineering department and the leadership and professional staff of the Madison area YMCA to address a serious drainage issue with the borough stormwater infrastructure under the YMCA parking lot. 
YMCA parking lot. High grade construction just completed a $15,280 contract to repair the roof on the sewer department storage building. Many thanks to Russ Brown and Lou Amaretto uh, uh, for volunteering to replace water damage interior sheetrock throughout the building. DPW assisted the Madison Police Department with National Night Out, but deploying road closure bar by employing deploying low road closure barricades at each of the block and party intersections. From the shade tree management boards, there has been an increase in service requests to access declining and stressed trees, both borough and private. One of the major contributors has been the dying of ash trees, which has affected all of Morris County. Residents are reminded to please contact the Department of Public Works at 973-593-3088 to request a borough arborist to assess condition of trees that they deem necessary to be assessed. Some recent curb and sidewalk work has resulted in the cutting of street tree roots. The Shade Tree Board is working with the Engineering Department and the Department of Public Works in following best practices in protecting the tree roots. This includes an arborist assessment on whether the roots removed should affect the stability of the tree. Recently, the chairs of Chatham Borough, Summit, Morristown, and Madison uh, Shade Tree met to discuss common tree issues. One of the major challenges for all four groups is in educating the residents on the value of tall trees and how to maintain them to avoid storm water damage, storm damage. This group, the group plans to meet periodically to explore trees. Okay, this is a little tough to read. The MEC has worked with Java's, MEC, the Madison Environmental Commission, has worked with Java's compost and DPW to arrange for a composting hub at the recycling center for $20 a month Subscribers can drop off food scraps, including meat, bones, and dairy, as well as compostable containers, flat mirror, and greasy pizza boxes. Subscriptions are available on a monthly basis, so families or groups can subscribe for a limited basis, limited time, and compost their food waste and party items. Information is available at rosenet.org. Uh, the Madison Sustainable Advisory Committee reports that as of July, Madison has been approved for 760 points for actions successfully complete, enough for silver certification this year. The Madison Sustainable Advisory Committee is working along with borough staff to revise several additional actions to be submitted in September or November for possible approval. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. And... Uh... Community Affairs, Ms. Cohen. Uh, very brief tonight. First, my own personal thank you uh, to Marlene Dolan. I got to work with her um, for the first two years. I was on council when I was on the, um, the Board of Health Liaison. So um, kudos to all the work she did before the pandemic and then, of course, during the pandemic. As far as Community Affairs goes, just a few reminders that the farmer's market is every Thursday from 1 to six, lots of new vendors um, coming even at this point. There have been some new and different ones. And then Bottle Hill Day with the beer garden and the car show will be October 2nd. If you're interested in being a vendor or a sponsor, email ddc at rosenet.org. Thanks. Thank you. And utilities, Ms. Ehrlich. Thank you, Mayor. The electric department reports that uh, on Sunday, August 1st, the standby crew was called to Rachel Avenue for dimming lights where they discovered the wires were burning up on the transformer. Um, they made a repair. The electric department also replaced three broken utility poles at the bottom of Green Village Road and transferred all of the department's equipment to the new poles. And this is a um, helpful insight, I think, from the electric department with regard to the increasing number of uh, residential solar installations in town. Uh, the department reminds us that they work constantly with solar vendors, answering questions, working through numerous design and application issues, processing applications for residents, inspecting their required cutoff switches, and issuing interconnection agreements, as well as uh, permission to operate these systems. So um, I think it's an, another great benefit to having our own utility department in town that they can be uh, an expert advisor and um, installer as we encourage um, residential solar uptake in the borough. 
the water department has an exciting uh, project going on with the AMI water meter installation project, which is being headed up by Meter Tech, a uh, contractor out of Kenilworth. The installation contractor will be installing new water meters with an automated reader module in over 220 properties at Madison Commons. The way this works is that Meter Tech schedules the appointment, then notifies the residents when they arrive. Meter Tech shuts off the water at the curb, sometimes with the help of our water department when the situation is challenging, and replaces the meter. So far, we're really glad to report that over 80% of residents in Madison Commons have already called to make an appointment. And it's anticipated that the project will wrap up before the end of the month. This pilot program will help make the larger installation go more smoothly as we set out to replace the remaining 4,800 water meters in the borough. If anyone outside the Madison Commons area is interested in having their water meter updated, you can please call the Madison Water Department at 973-966-7330 to schedule an appointment. Special thanks to all the staff involved in the pilot pro project, including Jim Trimble, Michael Palacier, and Tom DeBias. That's all for utilities. Thank you, and health, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, tonight, like others have, I'd like to thank Marlene Dolan for her almost 27 years of service. When I was president of the Board of Health, it was an honor working with her. When I was OEM coordinator, her work during Hurricane Sandy was unrivaled. So I want to wish Marlene all the best. Uh, she's a very special person and she deserves the recognition. And now in regards to COVID, um, you know, I'm not going to quote numbers other than to say that 80% of Madison residents have been fully vaccinated. That said, the variant is out there. If you haven't been vaccinated, while it's not mandated, please do so. When you're out in public, again, while it's not mandated, although some stores are strongly recommending it, um, please wear a mask and practice your social distancing. This COVID vi virus, is the pandemic is far from over and there's still much work to be done because we don't want to go back to where we were a year ago. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And uh, on to communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Council received one email from uh, resident Dave Carvey of Bellevue Avenue regarding his comment. He shared his comments to the Madison Housing Authority regarding uh, proposed construction next to the Rex for Tucker Apartments. Thank you very much. And now we're on to our first of two invitations for discussion. This one is limited to commenting on our agenda discussion and resolutions, which I will outline in just a second. If you wish to uh, uh, comment on any other topic, that will be coming up very shortly because we have no ordinances for hearing. So after our agenda discussion, we'll have our second round. Um, our agenda discussion for today is the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Fund Request which is also in as one of our resolutions. So I'll outline that in just a second. And here are the resolutions you may comment on. Resolution 220 is approving salary increase for Lisa Quinn, a merit increase to uh, in recognition of her successful state certification as a technical assistant to construction code official, which commonly known as TACO. Uh, and this is to 22.52, from 22.52 to $25 an hour reflecting the status of the position. Resolution 221 is authorizing the use of $7,900 in municipal open space recreation, historic preservation trust funds for construction, uh, for construction at the historic James Building, uh, also known as the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts. And that again is our agenda discussion. Uh, resolution 222 authorizing developers agreement between the borough of Madison and Heller Property Partners on block 2001, lots 19 to 23, 176, 184 Main Street. Resolution 223, supporting the Madison Environmental Commission Eco House and Garden Tour on uh, sep Sunday, September 12th, with a rain date of September 19th. And uh, information has gone out on that. You can sign up now. Resolution 224, the author authorizing submission of grant application, New Jersey Department of Environment Protection Equipment Modernization Grants Program. And this is uh, for 25% of the purchase price to re replace certain public works, diesel equipment, newer equipment, with reduced emissions. Resolution 225 is to award contract to Allegiance Trucks 
for the purchase of international hook lift truck and accessories under Sourcewell. This was a uh, resolution that had the previous pass rescinded to uh, make sure it went through the proper channels and process and is now back uh, on again. This is an amount of $257,950.75, and it's funded through Ordinance 24-2021. Resolution 226, authorizing Christmas tree sale at Dodge Field by the Rotary Club. Uh, resolution 227, authorizing special events permit to allow the use of Summerhill Park by Boy Scout Troop um, 124 on August 28th and September 10th. Resolution 228 is granting turn the town's teal permission to tie ribbons around trees on the streets of Madison from September 1 through September 30th in support of their turn the town's teal campaign to fight ovarian cancer. Resolution 229 is appointing Jill Strelick to the position of full-time office assistant and tax assessor's office and construction department. This is uh, filling a vacancy. Uh, and this is uh, an annual salary of $50,000. Please note that resolution 230 ha has been pulled. Uh, the funding ordinance for that is will be introduced tonight. We will we'll be back in September with the resolution to approve a contract. Uh, you may comment on any of those resolutions or again, uh, which is including the resolutions, the funding for the uh, museum, which is our one uh, discussion item. Uh, if you wish to comment, please try to keep your comments to three minutes. We will give you a one minute grace period and stop you at one minute. And if you want to comment on other, other topics, again, that will be coming up shortly. So please raise your hand now by clicking the hand or hitting star nine if you're on the phone. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and we move on to agenda discussions. The um, Museum Early Trades and Crafts Open Space Recreation and Recreation Preservation Funds request for the museum, uh, James Library, Oscar. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, in 2020, uh, the, the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts came to the open space uh, Recreation and Historic Preservation um, Advisory Committee requesting funds for uh, production documents um, and which would be part one and this was done in 2020 and then in, um, which would be a, they wanted a match um, to uh, obtain grants from both the county and the state and at that time the um, Open Space Advisory Committee recommended that the $10,000 they were requesting for phase one uh, should be approved by council, which this council did. The um, phase one um, matching grant, um, uh, they obtained both county money and state money, uh, county, yeah, county money and state money. And they didn't need the entire amount that we had um, approved. So they're asking if the $7,900 that's remaining that was approved in 2020 be now be applied to a, being a match for phase two, which is the actual construction of the storage facility in the, the historic James building. Um, and so I'm recommending that we support this resolution. They're gonna come, they would come to us anyway, asking for a match for the next part of the grant. And um, they've been great stewards of um, the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, which is a borough building. And again, this is um, in a way not new money, it's just reallocating previous money right. and it's uh, leveraging uh, money for major uh, grants from the county and state. So right. Any, qu any questions or comments from the council? Okay, sounds uh, great. And again, they are, as Austria, as you said, they are great stewards for our beautiful James Library. That is resolution 221, as previously noted on the consent agenda. As also noted, there are no ordinances for hearing. So now we move on to our second of two uh, discussions, invitation for discussion. This is when you may comment on any topic. Again, the same rules apply. Um, try to keep your comments at three minutes or less, but uh, we will give you that one minute grace and uh, ask you to stop at four. Uh, when you are recognized, please start off by stating your name and address and then uh, start with your comments. And Claire Wickham, we will start with you. Oh, that was fast. Uh, Claire Whitcomb, 12 Fairwood Road. Um, I just wanted to comment on the um, 
uh, Environmental Commission's Eco uh, Tour. It's a, actually an Eco Garden Tour. Uh, we did a house and garden tour earlier, but this is really, um, okay, I tried to get Bridget to jump on to talk about this, but she can't, so I'm just going to, uh, she, Bridget Daly and Joan McCary are, are organizing this, and they have, uh, I think, eight locations, and it's it's people who have native plants, native trees, organic vegetable garden, Brian Monahan's um, organic lawn care is is legendary, and it's a really COVID-friendly event because it's all going to be outdoors. We have a rain date. And um, we're just super excited about sharing the information on native plants and why they matter to our, support our pollinators, our bees, caterpillars, the things birds eat. So that's life and brief, but I wanted to just give a shout out to the people who organize that. Thank you, Claire, and thank you for the uh, work of the committee. And uh, I did see in today's uh, newsletter, the great newsletter put out by Environmental Commission, there's a link in there for the free tickets, you know, reservations and tickets are required in advance. They, again, are free. So click that link and reserve your spot. Uh, Lisa Leone. Hi, my name is Lisa Leone and I live at 20 Memorial Court in Denville. I wanted to speak on behalf of the Friends of the Drew Forest and just give an update on what we've been doing um, and the overwhelming support from the community for preserving the Drew Forest. Um, I also wanted to thank the mayor and council for your ongoing support of the Drew Forest Preserve. So as you all know, in the spring of this year, a group of residents and alumni formed the Friends of the Drew Forest to support protecting the forest preserve on campus. Since June 9th, a petition calling for the preservation of the Drew Forest Preserve has gained approximately 8,100 signatures, which is 1,100 more um, than when we were here two weeks ago in the dead of summer. Uh, the Friends have been active through the community with two tabling events at the Madison Farmers Market, um, talking with 50 people last week, um, and all got very positive responses from the community. Um, I also wanted to talk um, as an alumni from the class of 2016 and speak about how vital the Drew Forest was for my time at Drew. I majored in environmental studies and sustainability and was able to walk right out of my dorm into a classroom for the day, which is very rare and a lot of kids don't get that at other campuses. Um, I learned very a lot of valuable skills that I use in my career, some of which I um, brought to projects in Madison, New Jersey. Um, having lived, having a living classroom and a forest preserve on campus is a very rare thing and it truly makes Drew stand out above other campuses. I personally chose Drew not for the class sizes or its location, which are all great things, but for the fact that it felt like I was going to campus in the forest, that there were trees and woods and nature right there um, behind my dorm room. And I know many of my fellow alumni feel the same. You didn't have to study an environmental field to appreciate the preserve we had. Students were always sitting by the ponds, hanging out, taking a walk, de-stressing from classes and work studies. Um, it was a communal space outside the classroom and the libraries. Um, thinking about Drew, our mascot is the ranger and we call ourselves the forest. And that is what um, Drew truly is. It is a beautiful campus, a wonderful culture. And at the heart of it is the forest preserve. Selling off that gem would be against anything that Drew stands for and the culture of the campus it created. Its mission for sustainability and its slogan as the forest would no longer hold. Imagine giving a tour to future students and explaining that although Drew is called the forest and our mascot is a bear, we don't have any forest on campus. Um, I also wanted to read a few um, comments that I got from other alumni through various um, years. So one's from Gabby. She says, in recent years, Drew has emphasized the importance of sustainability and in many of the institution's core values. Protecting this vast area of natural land falls under these ideas of sustainability. Selling it would do the opposite. The gifts of nature, such like the ones found on Drew's campus are irreplaceable. If Drew is truly supportive of the sustainable action, the institution must rescind the decision and do what's right for the biodiversity that is the Drew's campus. Um, Rebecca H., also from the class of 1995, um, also feels that it's upsetting that Drew might sell um, it. She says that she became a PhD conservation biologist partially due um, to the forest on campus. Um, Sam M. says that the forest is one of the things that attracted her to go to college, just like me. Um, Carly also talks about how Drew would not have been nearly the same without the Drew forest. Um, 
a member of the class of 2012 says that they are signing the petition we had because of this rare piece of land that needs to be preserved. The forest was a big reason why I chose Drew and I have so many amazing memories of walking through the trees and seeing wildlife on this beautiful plant. Um, the culture of the university wouldn't be the same without the forest. Um, thanks so much for listening um, and have a great night. Thank you, Lisa. You got came in right under the wire there. And um, I can't share any details in the meeting, but we had a very productive meeting with the Drew administration. Um, and, um, you know, to reemphasize that uh, supporting Drew and preservation are not mutually exclusive. And so we will continue to be working diligently along that, that path. Now we'll bring up uh, Lisa Carballo. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Carbolo and I live on Glen Wild Road. So the Drew Forest is my front yard. I'm also a member of the Garden Club of Madison. When my husband and I moved here in 1998, the Drew Forest Preserve was a beautiful way to watch the seasons changed. Every spring, our twins would guess how many more weeks it would be before you couldn't see into the forest anymore. After joining the Garden Club and its conservation group, I began to learn more about why the Drew Forest is critical to the health of our local environment. So much so that my garden has become full of native New Jersey plants that help support our birds, bees, butterflies, and pollinators, just like the Drew Forest Preserve. We love having Drew University as a neighbor and want them to be around for generations to come. That's why my family and I support a conservation buy of the Drew Forest Preserve to keep the university and the forest together as one. Now, I just wanna read a few comments that folks have left on our petition. The forest needs to be preserved. The university needs to consider other means to bring in extra money. Save the forest for the students and faculty to enhance the quality of educational experiences at Drew University. The forest is priceless, cannot be replaced on the time scale of human generations if lost. This is precious, beautiful land and water with priceless educational opportunities too. I support preserving it and strengthening Drew at the same time. This is from the class of 94. The Drew Forest Preserve was a lifesaver during stressful times. Drew University, there is always another way to gain revenue, whereas once you sell this resource, there is no getting it back. As the most densely populated state in the nation, New Jersey has no shortage of development, but it does have a shortage of green space and biodiversity. Madison is a glorious place to live and raise children and retire as an old lady like me who walks her dog almost every day in the Drew Forests. For all the reasons listed in the petition, I can add the spiritual effect to spending time with the plants, ducks and their offspring, great blue heron, kingfishers, turtles, frogs, toads, foxy loxy with myriad plants and ancient trees. Drew is very special to this community for so many reasons, combined with air and water quality, concerts, lectures, student sharing events at all. We must preserve the whole place. If we can assist the maintenance of the forest too, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Now we bring up Molly, please state your full name and address and your comments. Hello, um, I'm Molly Polavoy. I'm at Six Fairwood Road in Madison. So first of all, thank you to the council for working to support the conservation of Drew Forest. I grew up in Florham Park and now I live in Madison with my husband and our two young daughters. Having local natural places to explore was a highlight of growing up here and I would very much like that for my children as well. From our front door, we can walk to the Zuck Arboretum in less than 10 minutes. This is a tremendous privilege and one that we take advantage of frequently. To be able to walk out into the woods and show my children the natural world is a gift that I do not take lightly. Thank you for everything you're working towards and we hope to hear good news soon. I have comments from two others I would like to share as well. This is from Edgar Gonzalez from the class of 2012. He goes by Eddie. He majored in biology. He says, the Drew Forest is critical to many classes in the biology department. A few of my introductory courses about ecology, evolution, and biodiversity used the Drew Forest to study wildlife. During my senior year, I conducted several experiments in the Drew Forest for my ornithology class, which was taught by Professor Tammy Wendfelder. These classes are not taught 
uh, not only taught me how to be a scientist, but the forest itself enhanced these classes by showing how a, science, a scientist studies in the field. Losing any part of the Drew Forest means we lose a part of that opportunity for students to get that hands-on experience. I sincerely hope you reconsider selling the land in the Drew Forest. It is not simply a staple or an icon of Drew University. It is actually a living learning experience for the biology department. Removing any part of it will negatively change the environment and therefore negatively impact our cherished ideal of a, of a diverse education. Thank you for your time, Eddie. And then one more comment from Tammy Anindo from Berkeley Heights. She says, my daughter is going to Drew in the fall for an environmental major, specifically because she wants to save forests from being destroyed. Now the university wants to tear down the 150 year old forest just as she arrives. How disappointed would she be to show up and see the forest destroyed? Please don't do it. We have to save it for her, for everyone, for the planet. Thank you for your time. And uh, we hope to hear good news soon. Take care. Thank you very much, Molly. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else wishing to comment, please raise your hand now. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and we now move on to introduction ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Will the clerk please unmute herself and read the statement? I'm trying. Someone <laughs> okay, keeps there we go. muting me. <laughs> okay. Who's doing that? Oh, and also it's ordinance 38, 2021, Mayor. Right. That's oh, a type. Thank, of thank you. Great. So these ordinances scheduled for first reading have a hearing date set for September the 13th, 2021. It will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinance 38-2021 for first reading. Ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $75,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for professional services for Waverly Place improvements. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 38-2021. Second. Council comments? Uh, Deb? Uh, just to provide a little more information, this um, $75,000 includes the engineering design firm, which uh, the mayor already mentioned, will be approving hopefully at the September 13th meeting. But I wanted to stress that it also um, includes the stakeholder meetings that we'll be holding for input into the design uh, that will be held um, before final design is um, brought to the council and approved. That'll be public as far as the community, as well as those stakeholder groups um, of boards and commissions that it's appropriate to share with. Thank you. Thank you very much for that background. Any other comments? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrian? Yes. All right. We now move on to consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move resolution 220-2021 through 230, I'm sorry, 229-2021. Second. Any council discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrian? Yes. Right. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher totals? For the current fund, $404,865.80. For the general capital fund, $315,170.90. The electric operating fund, $126,751.33. The electric capital fund, $27,689.84. For the water operating fund, $13,222.48. And for the trust, $5,011.23. The total is $892,711.58. Yes, Mayor, I make a motion to approve the vouchers. Second. Any uh, discussion or questions? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms.
Ms. Cohen? Yes. Serlick? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. All right, there is no new business. Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Mayor, I move that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Enjoy the uh, last month of the traditional part of summer. We still have two months in the real summer. And uh, keep cool this week and uh, be well. And uh, get that vaccination if you haven't yet. Take care.